Welcome back to the Chipola River near Mariana, Florida. This is Henson Conservation Area on the banks of the Chipola. This public park has numerous trails for hiking and even horse trails. On this adventure, my son and I met up with our friend Tony, pumped up our paddle boards and hiked in towards the Alamo Cave. Welcome to the Alamo Cave. This is known as a natural bridge formation. Here you see a large area of condensation on the walls of the cave. So after checking out the Alamo Cave, it was time to pick up our boards and make our way up the trail. And of course there's the creepy cabin in the woods. After a bit of a hike, we arrive at our launch point right near the old M&B Railroad trestle. This line once connected Bluntstown to Mariana. It operated from 1909 to 1972. So our plan is to paddle up the Chipola River and explore along the way and maybe make it all the way to Highway 90. Since this is Florida, it didn't take us long to spot our first alligator. Alligator's heading straight for Tony. Fortunately, it's just a baby. Karst geology on the banks and someone's private landing. Much of the property along the river is private, so it's a good idea not to get on land much. So after a long paddle upstream, we finally can see the bridge for Highway 90 ahead. At this point, we decided to turn around and make our way back downstream. Typically, it's easier going downstream, so Tony took advantage of this and did some fishing along the way. The Chipola River is known for great fishing. Tony wasn't trying too hard, but he landed quite a few fish. On our way back down the river, we discovered a little spot of interest. After a little investigation, it turned out this is actually a spring run. And naturally, we had to investigate. I had the best shoes for the job, so I took point. And there's the spring head, covered in duckweed. 
Duckweed's a common sight at a lot of springs. It deters a lot of people from getting in the water, but it's mainly a surface vegetation. It is very annoying that it can get stuck in your gear. Swiss cheese karst formations of this spring are very evident. There appears to be two vents, one kind of in the center and one off to the left. Where it is, this spring actually goes to a very deep cave system, but it's filled in with sand at the moment, so you really don't want to try to get in there. It doesn't take much for a small spring pool like this to get silted out. Looks like my team's heading back to the river, so I'm gonna take one more quick dive. One more push to get as deep as I can. I'll have to turn the camera sideways to get it in there. That restriction's gonna be pretty tough for any cave diver to get in. experience I usually take my paddle on these spring runs when you sink in mud it pays off back on the river and headed towards our main destination the oven that is a very old cypress tree trunk down the river we arrive at lily spring if you saw my first video on this place I tried to investigate this and wasn't too successful Since the river passes through this spring, which they call alluvial, the spring's clarity was terrible. If you saw my first video, I was up on top of that bluff. There's a little cave up top that connects to the cave down here below. finally arrive at the ovens. For us Floridians, this is a geological wonder. Evidently, this place gets its name Ovens from those adobe style oven holes behind Tony. We've been in a few caves and this one's pretty massive. We need to go back and round up my son. He's back at the paddle boards missing all this. Probably some ancient graffiti in here from generations of people visiting this cave. There are so many different passages and offshoots from this cave. And of course, somebody's always gotta leave trash. To go deeper in the cave, the floor gets a little gnarly. It's very slippery with all the water and mud. Fortunately, I had the right shoes, so I got volunteered to go deeper.
small side cavern, condensation has pooled on the floor. Time to head on back before they think I'm stuck somewhere in here. Apologies for the dirty lens. At this point we're using a backup 360 camera that has a bulbous lens cover, so it gets a little smudgy. So Tony and my son are ready to cast off and I want to take one last look at this geological wonder. After a mellow paddle on the remainder of the river, we arrive back around our parking area. Overall, it was a pretty awesome trip. Hopefully next time we'll get to see Tony in some deep water. He's one heck of a free diver. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We have many more videos coming soon exploring real Florida.